it wasn't a well-produced video. You know, it just, I hit the topic right and YouTube mm -hmm. ran with it at the time. I purposely have not cleaned a fish on a video because I think that could be part of the content that they're going after mm -hmm. hunters for. And that <laughs> video went viral. I was gaining like a thousand to 2000 subscribers a day. And there was yep. so many like negative people who were trashing me. I have such mixed feelings on what YouTube should and shouldn't do. I think it took me 11 years to hit 100,000 subscribers. I had it all to do again. What is up, Fisher people? And welcome back to another episode of the Castelline podcast. And uh, hopefully those of you who enjoy ice fishing have been able to do that a little bit by now by the time this posts. I know as of filming, I have only gone once personally, but it's been a weird warm winter and them's the breaks sometimes, unfortunately, when it comes to ice fishing. And speaking further on that topic of, you know, when this actually posts and what we're trying to do, I, I've, I've tried not to do like super timely content, current events kind of stuff. I, knowing that this is only going to be a winter project, I'm not going to do it during the guiding season. I wanted more topical content, stuff that could be relevant whenever you listen to it. So that's kind of been my goal as this has evolved. This specific video is going to talk a lot about YouTubing and how to grow an outdoors YouTube channel. And I'm going to be speaking with a friend of mine, Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, who knows very well how all that works because he is by far the most successful YouTuber that I know in person. He has over 100,000 subscribers. He does primarily hunting and archery videos. He's gotten into fishing a little bit, a little open water fishing, a little ice fishing, and ice fishing is actually how the two of us met. He ended up watching one of my videos and wanted to do a collaboration, and we've gone out two times in the last couple of years. So he's been a good, good guy to get to know, a good friend, and I didn't know exactly where this conversation was gonna go, but it definitely wound up focusing on his story of growing a YouTube channel. So it's not necessarily a tips and tricks sort of video, but it's more of, like I said, his story of how he got there, which I think can be a little more insightful sometimes. So if you're somebody that's looking forward to growing your own channel on YouTube, or perhaps just curious as to how this YouTube stuff all works, or just want to hear a good story from somebody that has a few to tell, uh, stay tuned. Well, welcome Sean from Sean's Outdoor Adventures. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat. How's everything going with you, man? Good, man. Um, I, well, had a shot at the biggest buck of my life last night and uh, botched it, which is rare for me. I'm, I'm quite the shot, as most people know, but um, it was so big that I kind of was a little bit shaken by that. So I, uh, mm. I kind of shot over top of him. Well, he, they duck. See, deer duck when they hear the bow go off. So mm -hmm. if, they don't, if he didn't duck, he would be, he would be here right now. But, um, oh. but aside from that, I'm doing well. So and the season ends for us on Wednesday. So I'm actually in the process of transitioning into ice fishing mind. Mm -hmm. um, that's the next step. And we have not had ice here. It's been so warm, you know, this year. Uh, last year, I was taking relatives out. My wife's actually, her sisters and stuff and par pa parents come out to Iowa from Pennsylvania and the East Coast for uh, Christmas. Last Christmas, I was taking people out ice fishing. This year, I could have taken them out in the boat. <laughs> you know, we had yeah. zero ice. But um, mm -hmm. so we're getting a big snowstorm coming up here uh, tomorrow, uh, tonight into mm -hmm. tomorrow. And then, and then the temperatures are supposed to plummet. So I don't know how that's going to impact, like if the if the snow is going to slow down the freezing process because of that, you know, insulated blanket or not. I guess we'll see. Mm -hmm. But ice is on the horizon over here. So how about how about for you? I guess you've been traveling north, but nothing near where you live, I would imagine. No, there's not. And for those watching, listening, etc., uh, we're, we're recording this on January eighth. It's probably not going to be released on January eighth. Might be February. We'll see how it goes. But okay. At, at this point in time, I have fished two days on Clear Lake, which you're familiar with, where we yeah. first Yeah, I saw one video. Yeah. There's and three that's, of ice. I'm like, yeah, no way. <laughs> it was, yeah, well, for one thing, we were fishing in six foot of water or less. So worst case scenario, I can still touch my toes. We had a rope. We had ice. We had all the stuff. But if you still fall through, 
it's going to ruin a good day and it might ruin some camera gear and he might lose some tackle. So yeah. Um, after that, a week later, the ice was gone. We were trying to go to South Dakota to ice fish. That didn't work. All that stuff disappeared. There was uh, 50 degrees plus rain, which does not work well with ice. It's just been, right. it's been such a weird year. I'm sure everybody else is very familiar with that. By the time you watch and listen to this, um, I'm sure everybody's had some ice fishing in by then. But yeah. as of now, that's been a frustration point to start the season, to say the least. Yeah. But what do you do? Yeah. Anyway. You deal with it. That's what you do. You, you deal, deal with it. it. You deal with it. Accept but it. Acceptance is a part of life, right, Sean? Yeah, man. Yeah. That's a key. But to start this off, I I got to tell this story. I was I was at my primary care doctor last winter, and I was just going for a routine checkup, as I often do when I come back from North Dakota. And he knows what I do. He knows what I, the fishing, the YouTube, all that kind of stuff. He had seen some of my own YouTube videos in the past before. He's really big into fishing himself. He was a little jealous that I was able to do all this, even though he's a doctor making all kinds of money, which mm -hmm. I have jealousies of my own. Nevertheless, he says to me, he's like, I think I saw you somewhere yesterday on TV. And I was like, well, you just watch more of my YouTube videos. He's like, no, 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 it wasn't that. Um, and I was like, fish in the Midwest. Like I've been on an episode and he's like, no, I was another YouTuber. I think he does mostly hunting and stuff. I don't know. It's a guy that I watch a lot. He does a little bit of ice fishing now and you're ice fishing with him. I'm like, oh, that's Sean. Yeah, so that's funny. as cliche as it sounds, it really is a small world. And uh, yeah. my doctor knows and watches your channel. That's so. funny. It's, you know, it's, it's so funny. Where was, okay. So for Christmas, part of the Christmas gift we gave the kids this year was to, t we went up to um, the Dells in Wisconsin where they had that indoor oh, yeah. water park. Mm -hmm. And that's like four hours away. And I'm, I'm standing there in my bathing suit and some dude walks up to me. He's like, dude, I, I watch your channel. I, 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 you know, I, I bought my bow because of you. And, and he's kind of like stuttering. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, is this happening right now? I mean, it happens like more than I would expect, yeah. but it's like, cause of YouTube, you know, I'm like, right. So, but anyhow, yeah. So stuff like that happens. It's weird. It is weird. And I, I've had a lot of people that recognize me on the water because a lot of people are looking to fish Lake Sakakawea. So they look up videos and then they see yeah. my videos and, and all that kind of stuff. But I've, I have had like two people that acted like that. And they were like, I'm honestly a little starstruck. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I have 2000 yeah. YouTube subscribers. Get out of here. Yeah. I'm yeah, nobody. It's, it's funny. Well, Hey, when I found your channel, you had like 500. So you're growing. Yeah. It's done well. I can't complain. It's a lot of fun. It's exciting. Hopefully this podcast can yeah. expand some things even further. Um, I'm early in the stages of doing this. We'll see how it goes. But so far, it's been fun. Nonetheless, yeah. hopefully today will be fun as well. Um, but yeah, so how we met then was, for some reason, you messaged me because you saw an ice fishing video I had done with my friend Jen, who is a way yep. better ice fisher person than I am, first of all. And knows a lot more about it, but um, yeah. So I just yeah, I, I just wanted to get into it, and I and I yeah. typed in ice fishing in Iowa, and and your your video with Jen popped up. So I messaged you right away. I was like, "What?" Because I wanted to get together with some people to ice fish. So you were like the first mm -hmm. person I reached out to. Yeah. So how had you ice fished at, at all in the past before that, or was that? I yeah. mean, that was my first season. I had just started, so I had been on the ice a couple mm -hmm. times. Uh, but I, you know, and I was just looking for more people to do it with, you know, and so mm -hmm. um, I just thought it'd be fun to meet up and and do a collaboration, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's that's kind of why I reached out to you, and um, yeah, so that's how it happened. Yeah, you can imagine my excitement when I saw that, and I went and checked out your channel. I saw you have over a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm like, I must be doing something kind of right if this guy wants to go ice fishing me. But there weren't a lot of other options. There's not a lot of ice fishing videos in Iowa, so. Yeah, I think at the time when I messaged you, I probably had like eighty thousand subs. Mm -hmm. Cause it's yeah, that's fair. Now. You did yeah, something like that. I mean, it was it was it was definitely under a hundred at the time, but mm -hmm. but still, it was a decent number. Um, yeah, but yeah, I so like you know w I know we were probably going to touch on YouTube a little bit, but one of the things I learned kind of early on, I got humbled. Um, I it took me a long time to grow my channel. Um, 
like, and I wasn't actually intending to grow the channels. It was probably, um, I had the channel for like five years and then, or a few years. And suddenly I realized I had like 5,000 subscribers. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I, I really wasn't paying any attention. Maybe I should, you know? So then I started mm -hmm. to try to grow the channel a little bit. And it took me years, probably seven years to reach like, I want to say 20,000 or 30,000 subscribers or something like mm -hmm. that. And then um, this guy messaged me who had like 4,000 subscribers. And he's like, hey, let's do a collaboration or something. And I was like, well, you know, you got a long way to go. You know, I mean, like it, you got, you, you know, it's kind of like my attitude. But I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know. And I was like, you know what? He was up in Canada and I got invited to, to this YouTube creator day. Um, and so I went to it and I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to be kind of remotely in your area. How about we meet up and do that collaboration, um, that you wanted to do. So at the time, like I, I guess by the time I actually got up there, I was at almost 40,000 subscribers. He was at about seven. We did a collaboration. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was silly. And, um, and then like, I don't know, maybe a couple months later, he had a video go viral. And like overnight, he was at 150,000 subs. It, you know, oh. went from like 7,000 to 150. And that was like the, in the first week. And then like he, his channel just blew up. And um, he wouldn't even respond to my emails after that. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, you want to get together, do another collaboration? And he's like, who is that? You know, like, <laughs> hand in the and I didn't really take him serious. I mean, we we chatted a number of times and, and I kind of viewed him as a friend. But mm -hmm. I didn't take him seriously, you know what I mean? Like, and it yep. was a, it was like a humbling thing for me. It's like, you know what? Get your head out of your rear end. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's not about who who can help you or who can make your channel grow or any of that stuff. It's it's about caring about people. And as soon mm -hmm. as I had that experience, it was like I viewed that as God saying, "Hey, you need to change." And so I did. Sure. I let go of all that stupidness, and then it's like, um, you know, that's why like. Here I was at, let's say, 80,000 subs and you had like 500. I'm like, I don't care. Let's get together. You know what I mean? Like yep. that, that stuff is is meaningless to me anymore. It's like, hey, and, it, and if it helps you, great. Um, I'm not I'm not doing it to for someone to help me. I'm just doing it because it's let's have fun. Let's 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 go fishing or let's do whatever. And, um, you know, if my channel, you know, was to do no good, you know, moving forward, it doesn't matter because what. All, the only thing that we take with us is our relationships. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's it. And, and so I treat every person basically the same. I try to anyway, like it, whether you had a million subscribers or five, you know, I try to treat you the same way, you know, because I learned, and that was, that's probably like, I don't even know how many years ago now, maybe like eight years ago that happened. And it was just like, yeah, boo, time to change. And so I changed as a person and I never looked back, you know? Yeah, I would I would say that's that philosophy definitely helps a lot. Just whether it's being open to making a relationship with a person, being open to trying a new video idea. Like I think I was trying so hard to get to a thousand, and I I had an idea of what a video was supposed to look like, mm -hmm. and then something about getting over that and realizing that like as long as I just keep putting out content, people like this kind of stuff, and there's a possibility new people are gonna find it. And I just started to get a little freer with well, let's let's try this video idea out. And I, cause I never wanted to waste time, but I was like, some of those spontaneous videos aren't going to happen if you don't give it a chance. So I was then willing to go through the effort to record a video and maybe seven hours later go, shoot, that didn't work. But you know, the next time it might. And at the same time, like anybody that I've ever met and, you know, try, I've learned some, whether, whether we had a good relationship or not, whether we got along or not, I've learned something from it, good or bad that helped me move forward in some form or fashion. So being more open to saying yes to things, I guess, like mm -hmm. the movie with Jim Carrey, the yes man or whatever that was. I don't know. I don't say yes to everything, but yeah, it just, you're going to get something out of it, whether it's a failure yeah. or a, there's no, maybe another way to look at it is there's no failures and there's no successes. It's just another experience. And the more you have, the, the better off you are maybe. Yeah. You know, it's funny, like when we think when we think about video production and all that, like so 
I started filming my hunts in 1995 because I, I saw a hunting video back then. They were on VHS tapes, you know, and they just started coming out. And I'm like, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to video hunts and be a professional hunter. And I saved up my money, bought a camcorder, and I was begging my friends to help me video. And, um, you know, so I had grown up with this this hunting video production idea in mind. And then at one point, I, I you know, I put together my first video and I showed it to somebody like, you got to put this on YouTube. I'm like, no way. I'm not giving this away for free. I put all these years of work into it, you know. <laughs> and um, at the time, you know, YouTube, when I started on YouTube, there was no monetization. That, that right. wasn't even it. There wasn't even an option. They didn't even do ads. It just was you uploaded videos. And yep. then I was like, ah, what the heck? I'll I'll upload it anyway. So I uploaded it. And um, you know, years, you know, probably I, I don't know, a couple years later, I stood in my backyard, hit record on the camcorder, and I stood there for like 20 minutes talking about calling deer. And um, and here I'm like spending all this money and time trying to produce hunting videos, even when I started you know, making them just for YouTube. You know, I'm spending so much money and time trying to produce these videos, and um, they they would let's say get a, f a thousand views, and the, mm -hmm. the deer calling video is the first video I ever had that went over a million views, and like I didn't put any effort into it. I just stood in my yard and talked for twenty minutes with a deer call in my hand. And mm -hmm. it's like, it was almost like a joke on me, you know, like here you're doing all this stuff and you know, it's not really getting views. And here's this other video that you didn't even take seriously necessarily is your best video, you know? So like, um, anyhow, the point is you just never know what people are going to click on or what the, the whole thing's going to promote for you. Like, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of that with, when it comes to YouTube, it just depends on if they, they promote your video for you or not you know i mean like mm -hmm. you, anymore it's so different from when i started like when i started i mean I, I could put up a hunting video actually when i my first video that i uploaded i told you about it probably had like ten thousand views in the first year you know and I, mm -hmm. and that's back when i had you know seven thousand subscribers or something like i i started off with archery videos and th that's how i got all my subscribers at first was archery and then i started to upload the hunting ones later and um i actually lost a ton of subscribers because a lot of archers were like against hunting or not into hunting they yep. were just target archers so i lost tons of subscribers from that and um so anyhow um as 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 time went on um i just began to see that uh all that original mindset of producing these these hunting videos it, it really was you know whatever oh and i was talking about um youtube used to just promote the videos i guess you know i, I would get ten thousand views and then as they started to change their platform and made it harder for hunters like i i've harvested giant bucks and hardly gotten any views let's see if i can change my camera my so i got like well you can't really see it from this angle but this there's a couple of really big bucks up here and like the one of them, I shot this, that, that buck that year and I made a video on it. And I thought this is going to get so many views and it, it got probably 9,000 views, but I, I also had a doe that I shot that got like 11,000 views that year. And it's like, you know, it all depends on what YouTube is willing to promote. But as the mm -hmm. years went by, I was shooting bigger and bigger bucks and getting fewer and fewer views because they were kind of crimp, crimping down on hunters. I mean, some hunters are successful, you know, it, it just, they are, but others of us, we kind of get put on the back burner by YouTube. So my channel is as big as it is, not because of the hunting videos, but because of the other educational archery. And I mean, I do educational hunting too, but um, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I, I called it Sean's Outdoor Adventures because the original intention was to do outdoor adventures, fishing, camping, hunting. But um, it's like it gets very niche oriented. And so like when you go outside of the niche, you get all these people unsubscribing because, oh, that's not what I signed up for. You know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I think that's been the most interesting thing for me doing this is anytime you post a video that starts an exodus of subscribers and you and I. The first time that happened, it just kind of blew me away. I didn't understand why. Like the first, the first big 
jump was when I was, I, I wrote the memoir in the book and I published that. And then I basically did a video that was just about the book. And I lost like 30 subscribers in the next two days. I was like, okay, I like, can you just not watch that video? But that, again, that was me exactly. like complaining and, you know, being frustrated in the situation as opposed to adapting and learning and going, okay, you know, this is about what they want to watch. Ultimately, they have a choice yeah. and they didn't want to watch that. So I have yeah. to learn from that. So on, on the, the flip side of that, like when you do post a video that does way above and beyond what your normal videos are, then you try to learn from, okay, that was something they thought was worthy of a bigger audience, apparently. Um, but I, I have noticed over time, whether it's just me doing it longer and YouTube has more data or YouTube getting better at it, they seem to know more who to show the videos to. I very rarely lose net loss of subscribers on a video anymore. It's pretty steady now. So I think as long as I'm posting something that's relatively close to what I usually post, they kind of maybe have an idea of who likes me and my mm -hmm. stuff, I think. If yeah. that makes sense, it's more yeah. stable now. Yeah. Did you find that during the course of your Yeah, I would say, um, you know, in some ways, yes, but there's been a few surprises too. Like I, I've tried to do a few diversification videos to mm -hmm. um, see. And one of my biggest watched videos, even to this day, is I did a basement finishing project and I have an environmental degree. So I talked all about the environmental issue of mold in basements and how to avoid that. So it was like, it wasn't just a basement finishing video, but also how to avoid getting toxic mold in your project, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was, it's very educational and um, it does well. I mean, just cause like when people do Google searches or YouTube searches, it comes up and um, I still get lots of views. There's been times where that's been my top um, watched video for like months at a time, like when people are doing that kind of a project and I, it still brings tons of traffic to my channel. Um, and you know, at the end of that, I mean, I posted that video when I was probably at like 50,000 subscribers, maybe, maybe less, maybe 40,000. It was probably more like 40,000. And I was like, Hey, you know, if you appreciated this, subscribe to my channel. Cause I'm trying to hit a hundred thousand. And then um, when I hit 100,000 and I posted like a hunting video, I lost like thousands of subs. They're like, oh, he got there. So I think a lot of those people were just trying to help me out. You know, and he's like, he got there. I don't want to watch hunting. So then I had like this giant drop in subscribers after I hit 100,000. Um, so in one sense, it helped. But in another sense, it hurt. Because then YouTube looks at that and says, oh, well, they don't like his hunting videos. And um, so maybe we won't show his hunting videos. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but if I had it all to do again, I would say, hey, listen, uh, like the video. Don't subscribe if you're not into hunting, though, because this is like a one off kind of video. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to diversify some content. But, you know, if you know anybody that is into hunting, maybe share my channel with them. You know, and then I could have yeah. got a little uh, referral that way. Um, so that would be, if I had it all to do again, I would have did it differently, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, so it, but the point though is it's okay to sometimes to diversify your content. You just have to hit it right. You know, cause sometimes you will, and sometimes you won't. And it's too, too hard to predict that. You just got to try, like you said earlier, you just yeah. got to try. What, what do you think is more? So let's, ass let's assume that somebody is fairly competent and makes pretty decent, pretty helpful videos from the start. You know, the content's at least decent. Is it more helpful? Like, do you get more growth because you got better and you made better content or just because you've been doing it longer and they say, all right, he's got 800 videos now instead of 400 and you know he's got I a mean, track record. Some my, yeah, some of my best growth was just, it like, it just hit it right. So like my first huge video was um, tips to improve archery accuracy. And I had like 700,000 views on that video and it was in standard definition. And it was me standing in my yard talking. I just talked, I, I just even, I didn't even do much shooting in the video. I just talked through the tips and it's because the tips worked. Like everybody wrote and commented, this is the best archery instruction video I've ever come across on YouTube. So I was getting lots of thumbs ups, 
lots of comments of like this, this is, and I've had people say, Hey, I want to embed this on my website to share it with others. And, um, and it wasn't a well, it wasn't a well-produced video. You know, it just, I hit the topic right and YouTube Mm -hmm. ran with it at the time. And it, and eventually YouTube stopped showing that video because it's standard definition. The quality compared to now is junk. You know, you got most, a lot of videos are, at least high def, if not 4k anymore. And so, you know, YouTube just kind of stopped showing that video. Um, and then like my deer calling videos have, uh, you know, launched and again, nothing special about them. They're not like high tech production music. And it's just me explaining the material and it's making a huge difference for the people who are watching it. So they're, they're saying, they're coming back saying, Hey, I watched this video every year before hunting season. Last year, I used this information called in my first buck, that kind of stuff over and over and over and over again. So that the actual, the stuff that's done incredibly well for me is the stuff that made a huge impact for the people who watched it, if that makes sense. And then like my stuff, that's like super, like put a big effort into it. Lots of B-roll splicing music in the background. You know, it's just, it's just one of another, you know, like there's so many yeah. people out there doing it anymore. It doesn't have, there's nothing about it that, you know, somebody can click on that one or 50,000 other ones that are like, just like it. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just a matter of like my big chunks of growth have been just hitting the right topic at the right time with the right material. And it just took off. I just wanted to take a brief moment to say this podcast is not sponsored by iris.fm. That would be pretty cool if it was. I mean, I'm already recording this podcast on their software, which is pretty slick and really handy. So, I don't know. If you're listening, Iris, call me. So, basically, a viral video is what's been your... You'll get to a certain point, you get a, a really good quote unquote viral video that takes your growth another step up and gives you another boost. Is that fair to I say? I would say I would say having a video that really does well and like that really performs well, it it does so year after year. So like my okay. my my deer calling video didn't hit a million views for like six years. But it was like year three or year four, that's when it just launched like Wow. Like it, it just somehow hit the search result just right. Like, um, I don't know, it, like for the first like three or four years, it just it just was OK. And then all of a sudden it just launched because it was hitting search results. People were clicking. People were staying on the video all the way to the end because they were just absorbing all the material, like all the information that I gave. And then YouTube's like, oh, wait a second. This video is doing really well. Let's keep you know, offering it when someone does this kind of search. And so um, it wasn't even a new video, you know, it was mm-hmm. years old and it just happened to hit later on. And the, my archery video was kind of like, it, it kind of had an exponential growth until they stopped showing it. Um, but it was like, it was over time. It just, um, it was there and it performed well, but then as time went on, it started to get used more and more in search results. Um, maybe it proved itself. I, I don't know. So mm-hmm. I've never had a super viral. Actually, no, I have. I did have a super viral video out of the gate uh, compared to my other stuff. So mm-hmm. back in 2014, I um, I was picked. To, I, I don't know. Do you know you're not really into hunting at all. So if I said a professional hunting company, you probably wouldn't. It wouldn't mean anything to you. It might not. It might go over my head, but you can say it. Okay, so there's a there's a, a company called Drury Outdoors, big you know they they're brothers and they started back in the '90s or whatever. So they really developed a big company for you know big hunting videos and hunting shows on the Outdoor Channel and all that type of stuff. So in like 2014, they were going to produce a new show and they were taking applicants and people who were watching my channel said, "You got to apply for this. You got to apply for this." So I'm like, "All right." So I I said, consider me for the show, you know, whatever. And they picked me for the show, for this new show they were going to produce on the TV, on TV. And um, so 
uh, they were sent me all this free gear, you know, camouflage clothes, a free bow, a free muzzle loader, which I don't even gun hunt. I'm a bow hunter only. Uh, but, you know, they sent me all this stuff, probably like $4,000 worth of merchandise to promote in the videos. Like I was going to film my videos and send them, submit them to them for the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then they flew me out to uh, Missouri where they're located, where their office is. And then they were going to do film the, the introduction to the show, meet the cast and all that kind of stuff. And they, they get there, I get there and they're like, yeah, you're part of the family now. You know, once you're part of the family, you're always part of the family, all this stuff. And I'm like, okay. And then, they were talking about part of the show was going to be filmed at an indoor arena after the hunting season was over. It's going to be like a shooting contest kind of a thing. And they're like, you know, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday or whatever. I'm like, well, just so you know, I got to go to church. That's my priority. So Sunday morning, I got to go to church before we film. And that was like a big issue for them, well, you know, like, ugh, you know, and, um, <laughs> You know, and I was like, I'm just telling you, we got to work around that because God's more important than you. And um, at the time, I was also um, contacted by there's a big bow company called Bowtech. And at the time, they I was at like 40,000 subscribers. They're like, hey, would you do a live show for us? So I started to do a live show for them on my YouTube channel. And and it was broadcast on their their platforms like their YouTube, their Facebook. Uh, it was it was it was broadcast all over the place, and um, and then I think the one guy who was the manager of the TV show after I said that thing about Sunday, he just he was trying to find a way to get me out of there. I think I don't know. Um, so their bow company that sponsored them was a different company. And he's like, you know, I just I just now saw that you're doing this thing with Bowtech. That's not going to fly well with our sponsors. And I was like, well, it doesn't say anything in your contract about me having to stop doing what I'm doing over on my social media. You know what right. I mean? And I said, in your videos, I'm going to use your bow. I'm going to promote your bow. But over here, I'm doing it's a different project. Oh, no, no, that's not going to work. You're, you're, you're out. You're out. They kicked me off the thing. So. I have all these followers who are all excited for me being on the show and I'm doing all these unboxings like, Oh, look at jewelry sent me this week, you know? And so I did a video called dumped by jewelry outdoors. And that <laughs> video went viral for me. Like I was gaining like, um, I was gaining like a thousand to 2000 subscribers a day from, from that. Yeah. It was like Ooh. ridiculous. And I got like 300,000 views within, ah, like, I, three weeks i was like and it, so that went viral for me and wow. then i was like you know i don't i don't want this to be the reason why i grow for one and the other thing that i noticed is the people who were watching and subscribing they were clicking on it because of like you know the negative sort of title enticed mm -hmm. them and there was yep. so many like negative people who were trashing me on my channel. Like they subscribed, but they were trashing me. Like anything I did, they were trashing me. And I'm like, this isn't the kind of audience I want to attract. And yeah. I also like, I mean, there's a lot of people in the Jewelry Outdoors organization. I don't want to give a negative impression of the whole, because I said, look, you know, it just, I was nice about it. And I didn't speak negatively about anybody. I said, you know, it was an issue with me doing the Bowtech project and it wouldn't work for their sponsor. And so they had to, you know, cut ties. So I won't be on the show. I just, I, I mean, I was really nice about it, but people were just like, you're such a baby. You're complaining. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just telling my followers what's going on. And yep. so um, eventually I just, I took the video down you know, probably within like a couple months. So uh, by the end of, the, I basically probably went till the end of the hunting season, like the end of December and then just took it down. But, and that's when I realized too, like, who do I want to attract? Like, what kind of people do I want hanging around? What kind of community do I want to mm -hmm. create? And so like, I started to be a little more, I've always been like, God bless you in my videos, but I started to be a little more forward about my Christianity. Uh, I'm actually a Catholic. So I kind of bring that forward. And I kind of just am like, hey, if you don't like Jesus or Catholics, don't hang around, you know, because 
you're going to get that here. You know, it's going to come up mm-hmm. sooner or later. Cause that's like, like yep. it just came up in your podcast. It's, it's who I am and I'm not hiding who I am. I'm not going to try to be somebody I'm not to, in order to gain followers. And I also don't want to, you know, just play the, you know, the clickbait game to, cause you're going to get all kinds of negative people. And that's not the kind of community I want right. to attract. So, um, so that, that took a while to resolve, you know, just like those people eventually ended up unsubscribing a a lot of those, you know, because they weren't, they didn't really, they didn't care about me for one. And I wasn't just pumping out content that was appealing to them. So, um, so, but it did give me a little boost. And so I think that's part of it too, is that you don't, you don't just want to get a viral video. It's like, what kind of, if I do get a viral video, what do I want it to be about? Yeah, you know, what kind of audience do I want to attract with that? So, yeah, for sure. I would like I would say, in the beginning, it was just a matter of how how do you get people to watch these videos? I wasn't doing anything crazy, but I just literally had the question. I don't know how to get people to watch a video. I don't know how this works yet. And then you get some people that start watching, and you get a little bit bit of momentum. And like I said, you get some data points of here was a video that made people drop off. Here was a video that did really well and gained subscribers. And then you start learning some of those levers that you can probably pull. It doesn't always work, but you kind of learn, here's what's a good thumbnail. Here's what a good topic is. Am I trying to target search like a how-to sort of thing? Or am I trying to do something that's entertaining? But yeah, I, I think I like the fact that I've gotten to a point where it's steady, consistent. I don't lose a lot on a net right now. And Hopefully I get the sense that the people that watch my videos really like them. And I hope that's the case because I, and I, and same, same to you. I don't speak in terms of religious stuff on my videos a lot, but I am very open about my personality. I'm a little bit of a goofball. I like to post stuff. If I screw things up, I'm not the type of person that's going to hide the fact that I botched a net job. That's not like (laughs) I'm trying to be who I am. And I think it's gotten to the point where the people that like who I am, and the people that are on my videos as well, and the content that's on the videos as well, like it enough that they're going to stick around and it feels pretty stable. So I'm very happy about that. I would love to get to 100,000 subscribers too. Don't get me wrong. And I don't know what the process of getting there necessarily is, but I, I've I also never really had a viral video per se. Like I do really well in terms of like, I consistently have videos that get more views than my number of subscribers. But I think my most watched video of all time is like maybe 30,000, which isn't that high, but. I think that you just, you just got to stick with it for one. Like, you know, like I, I think it took me 11 years to hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Like some, some people, some people are going to hit it because they got some, like that guy I told you about, he had that viral video. Um, He, I'm trying to remember what it was. He, I think he he um, cleaned, cooked, and ate a porcupine on the video, and I think that's what went viral for him. Yeah, so right. um, but uh, so one is just sticking with it and being year being there year after year is one, but I think too like it, it it's also part you know like I mean YouTube has continually changed too. So it's made it harder for my type of videos, but I've seen a lot of guys with successful fishing channels. So for you, I think it's a little, it's a little more possible. Um, I know like a lot of guys that I am friends with who have YouTube channels that are hunting, they have seen huge pauses in their growth as have, as have I, um, because of the changes that YouTube have made. They, they're really trying to uh, make it hard for, hunters you know like that uh there's a lot yep. i'm not saying every there are channels that are still mm-hmm. extremely successful but there's a lot that have really hit a wall and it's just because you know youtube's making the changes made the changes that they have but i i see lots of successful fishing channels so one is it's just sticking with it and over time you know you get that growth and i think um you know, I'm trying to think, of, I, I guess it's just a matter of patience. If you're willing to stick it out, you'll get there kind of a thing. Um, but you're growing. I mean, it's been two years now and you're, yeah. like I said, you were, you were at about 500 when I reached out to you. Now you're mm-hmm. well over 2000 more than that. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think too. Go ahead. To, to your point about the hunting, I would agree that there's been some some changes in that. Hunters have had a harder time. And it's also like I've had a lot of people ask me, for example, to do more cooking videos, but specifically like catch, clean, and cook, or mm -hmm. how to flay a walleye. And I'll, I've, I've told some people outright, and other times I just kind of hint at things, but I, I purposely have not cleaned a fish on a video because... I think that could be part of the content that they're going after mm -hmm. hunters for. Yeah. Now, I it doesn't really bother me, I guess, a whole lot personally because I don't I don't care if I clean fish on a video or not. But when it comes to hunting, that's that's the whole video. You know what I mean? So I understand mm -hmm. it. It's a tough yeah. scenario. Um, I think like there's yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking like in general with content too, like hunting is a seasonal, like, I mean, really my, mm -hmm. my main viewership is September through December. And then it just, it, it goes way up and then comes way back down through most of the year. I think like for you, for fishing, I think there's more potential for fishing because, well, you got ice fishing now. So there's a, you have another season and then, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have, you know spring summer fall fishing you know you you basically you can do it for more of the year sure and um but you know at the same time um you may only have people that are into ice fishing and you may lose them come you know open water and vice versa you know who, so who knows there but yeah. um i wanted to mention something too about the thumbnail for the videos um my my two best videos of all time um I, it was, they were just automatically generated thumbnails. I did nothing, you know what I mean? And so like I've, and I've had all these other ones where I've spent all this time trying to create a good thumbnail to click on and the video doesn't mm -hmm. do well. So, I mean, you just, it even, even the good thumbnail is not always the, the right. key, you know, <laughs> YouTube tells you that, but it doesn't always yeah. really equate to that. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so yeah, to take a slight turn here then. So yeah. Now that you have started to do a little bit of fishing content on your channel, how have yeah. you found that to impact your channel? What types of fishing videos have you done? And is it almost like starting a whole new channel when it comes to the views on those videos and stuff? Yeah, I mean, the the, the fishing videos don't do particularly well, you know, because a lot of my current subscribers are hunters or archers and not necessarily fishermen, you know what I mean? So there's you know, you would think somebody who's into hunting is also into fishing, but that's not necessarily the case, you know, and, and stuff like that. It, so, um, like if I upload a, a ice fishing video, I might get a thousand views, you know, whereas if I upload a hunting video in the peak of hunting season, I might get 10,000 views, you know, and that's just a couple months apart from each other. Like, like if I upload a video in November, um, and it gets 10,000 views. And then I upload an ice fishing video in January, just like not even two months later, it might get 1200 views. And it's just um, topic oriented, you know, like, I mean, I have an outdoor channel, but a lot of the guys are either into archery or hunting and not necessarily fishing. They don't, so they don't have any interest. There's a lot of people, I mean, thousands and thousands of people are down in the South, the Alabama, Texas, Florida, they don't care at all about ice fishing. You're not watching mm -hmm. ice fishing, you know? Yep. So, I mean, and you might even have that too. Like if you got open water fishermen watching your stuff during the summer, you know, but they're from Georgia and uh, yep. you're, you're pumping out ice fishing videos. They don't necessarily care. There's still going to be plenty of people who are going to be researching, um, you know, ice fishing videos. And like, yep. that's how I found you was looking for ice fishing people. I think the, um, at least when it comes to hunting and archery, the changes that YouTube have made have really hurt their own platform. And it's to the point where the only time people like me will do well is if we upload an educational video. If I yep. just upload a hunting video, like, Hey, we're going out hunting. We're going to try this public land spot. And you know, oh, we no success today, but we'll try again tomorrow. That, that's getting less and less people yep. are on YouTube for that. The, the, the only time yep. people are signing on, like, I don't know how to fix my bow. I need to go find a bow tuning video yep. and then they'll find my videos, you know? So, and that's because of the changes YouTube has made. And so it's, 
it's become harder and harder and harder for people in that genre. If I, if I was starting from scratch, you know, again, I, you know, I, I, first of all, you got to find content that you can continue to produce. Like, yeah, um, like sure. even, even my, like my successful videos, Hey, there's only so many bow instruction videos you can put out. There's only so many deer calling videos you can put out. And then it's like, people are like, yeah, dude, we, we get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so like, just because they're good videos doesn't mean it's duplicatable for me. Like I can't yep. just make a channel calling deer cause there's only a few techniques that are necessary. And then once you know those move on, you know? Yep. So, um, you know, and those topics that I've done well for my channel on YouTube are those types of topics that are not necessarily duplicatable. And so anyhow, it's just a, it's a matter of continuing to put out content, sticking around because there are going to be lots and lots of people who are still going to watch, you know, even if they, if they signed up because of the deer calling video, they're going to hang around for my deer hunting, you know, mm -hmm. like they want to see how I do, even if it's not educational, but the way to discovery for a channel like mine is having something that people are going to want to search and having the right video to pop up for that search result. That's, that's how YouTube has changed. It used to not be that way when I was going through that growth, like from 20,000 to 80,000 subscribers range, um, YouTube would just suggest my videos and I'd do well, but anymore, yep. I have to have a really searchable video if I want to do well. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm trying. I've been thinking about this more as you were making some of your points. I have such mixed feelings on what YouTube should and shouldn't do when they are. I mean, the algorithm is written by them to begin with, but when they're tweaking it in certain ways because they're trying to favor certain types of content, whatever you want to call it. On one hand, um, in America, we have a capitalistic society. YouTube is a company. Google is a company. They have the right to run the company the way they want to run it. On the other hand, it's gotten so big now and so many people rely on their income for it that they're making decisions that are, it's, it's almost like, like in a way we're not, we're not employees of YouTube, but we can't like, but some of our income depends on it and whether or not people see your videos depends on the income you make. And you know what I mean? So it's almost like they've gotten to a point where they're so big that I don't know if they appreciate some of the changes they've done that are hurting people, whether or not it's a good idea or not to tamp down content that has shooting of animals. Everybody can have that discussion, but it just, it, I get a little bothered, I guess, when they flip a switch and change things to where somebody that may have been making a good living, making a hunting video channel, and all of a sudden they can't do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, my income has dropped so much. I mean, I used to, I used to make way more money than I do now because of all that. And really, it's just, it's, it's just a matter of how do you want to achieve your end. For them, a lot of them sure. are animal rights people, or or that mindset, like, oh, you're hurting mm -hmm. animals, so let's let's demote these people, rather than, hey, let's just make it clear if you don't want to if you don't want to see a video ever that involves the death of an animal for someone's consumption so they can live, then just click mm -hmm. this, this little check mark and we won't allow that com content sure. to show up period. It's that yeah. simple. And they have the technology to do that. Instead, they do this whole thing with the algorithm to, you know, especially these certain keywords, we, we demote these videos and um, stuff like that. So, yep. you know, and I would say, um, if there ever becomes a, a platform that can rival them, they're going to regret it at that time. I know there's lots of ones that have been trying to, like I've I have been reached out to by multiple platforms saying, hey, we we got a new platform to rival YouTube. Please bring your content over. All you got to do is agree, and we can transport all your content over for you. And you know I've allowed one or two of them to do that and tried it, but it's there's nobody there watching hardly. Cause you know what I mean? Right. Like the videos get like very few views. Right. Um, so yeah, just nobody's been able to rival YouTube, but at the same time, YouTube has really lost their, um, uh, recreational viewers. Like a lot of other, um, social media platforms now have taken a lot of that viewership away from YouTube. Like whether it's 
um, Instagram or Facebook or, or TikTok, you know, they're just, YouTube has lost a lot of their viewership. And that's why they've been scrambling, trying to like make shorts, like, okay, we're going to do shorts now to try to get that audience back who only wants to watch a one minute or less video. And I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, but YouTube is scrambling as it is. And they're still the king when it comes to, you know, you, if you want to learn something, you can go on YouTube and type it in and say, you know, show, teach me how to do this. And that's really that's what YouTube is anymore for a lot of people. It's just that place to go to for a one-off to, you know, I got to, I got to learn how to build a shed. So I got to go watch a tutorial on how to build a shed and that's it. They're not coming back. You know, even if they love the video, yeah, maybe they click subscribe, but they're not watching more content. They just wanted to learn how to, you know, build the shed. And even the whole subscriber thing I think is, is kind of garbage the way they do it. Like, you can't just subscribe and then get the content from that person. You got to click right. the bell and do all the, you know, it's like, come on, you know, yeah. just send people the notification, you know, uh, if they hit subscribe. So even that whole subscribe thing, um, even in the changes they made over that has really hurt my channel. Like a lot of my viewership were older men who aren't real techie and they used to get an email when I would do an upload. And they would click on yeah. the thing. Mm-hmm. YouTube stopped doing that. And so when they stopped doing that, I lost so much of my viewership because those dudes don't know how to, you know, get a smartphone and turn on notifications on their smartphone. With all those types of changes like that, that really hurt my 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 particular channel because of my audience. I mean, and you probably have yep. a predominantly male audience too, I would guess, as a I do. channel. Very high, yeah. And then the age bracket too. I mean, I, it, my my age bracket is roughly the the main bulk of it is eighteen through fifty. But a lot of those, there's a lot of guys who just aren't techie. You know, they're not on smartphones and notifications mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Sure. I mean, your younger audience is, but like I don't even have notifications turned on on my phone because I don't want to blow one up all the time. You know, I don't want to be bothered all day long. So, mm-hmm. that, you know, people just don't have notifications turned on on their phone. Kids blow, you know, but yeah. kids aren't our main audience. You know, we're we're dealing with people who work for a living. <laughs> yep. So anyhow, YouTube. Yeah, just- and I, I think the the point that always comes back to is is the fact that throughout the journey of doing this, like there's always going to be things that make whatever you're doing more favorable and things that make it less favorable. Like for me, I just, I want to stick to the videos that I like to make. And I'm a little bit of a creative and an artist by nature. And I'm going to make the videos that I think make me happy to make. I'm always having an ear to like, I think this would be some, you know, if I, if I feel like there's content that people are wanting or something that I think is helpful that maybe other people haven't heard before, I want to make a video about that. But at the same time, like, I don't like chasing trends. You know, if the trend is like a shock value thing, like I'm going to try to catch fish on my boat with a vacuum cleaner. I don't know, something weird. Like, I'm not going to try to chase those things, but I want, I want to do well, but it's so hard to predict how well that's going to go. So hopefully over the long run, if if you just at least like making the videos. Yeah, I think that. Let the chips fall where they may, I suppose. Yeah. And I think if you just stick with it over time, you're just going to continue to see growth, you know? I mean, um, consistency, man. I think, yeah, I think over time your channel is going to keep growing. And um, especially, like, I noticed for my channel, except for the last two years when they made all these changes, my channel just had exponential growth. Every year it grew more. And it grew more because it grew more, you know, like every year just up and up and up and up and up. And then, I'd say maybe it was actually around COVID, like 2020, they, they were all locked in their rooms. So they started to like, let's just think about how we can make these changes, you know, and they just started implementing changes that really started to hurt my type of content. And I just saw that exponential growth stop and just plateau. And I've been, you know, I I ended up reaching a hundred thousand subscribers and beyond, but once I hit 80,000, that's when they started to make the change. And it just took longer and longer to actually finally get to that point. Um, so I don't know how that translates for fishing channels but or, or other types of content. But YouTube has made it harder for certain types of content to succeed compared to what, the, what it used to be like. 
Yeah. And I guess to your other point, when you were talking about the way YouTube has been used over time, like you looking at it for an educational video was very much how I saw YouTube in the beginning. And then I think things definitely changed to became more of an entertainment platform. It's funny that you, you say that it may have reverted back to more of what it was now, because if that's the case, I have completely missed it just as me as a person, because that's all I watch anymore. Almost that is like, like, I don't even have a Netflix account anymore. Every night, if I'm going to watch something, I just turn on YouTube. But that's just me. I'm living my own little bubble. Mm. So like, I, I'm hoping there's more people that, out there that uh, are like me. But if there's there not, then are, I don't know. There are people, but not as many as there used to be. Fair enough. I yeah. A lot of, well, and I could just be speaking for my genre of hunting. You know what I mean? Like, Hard to say. The guys who watch hunting videos there are other apps and platforms now like that there okay. are there's apps where you can pay let's say it's three dollars a month or whatever and you get access to all these high like high pro, highly produced hunting shows you yeah. know what i mean so rather than you know deal with youtube and all the stuff that hunters have had to deal with a lot of the hunting video producers went to these apps like hey man follow me over there. It's only three bucks a month and you get access to everybody, not just me kind right. of thing. And then um, now a lot of the, a lot of those viewers, hundreds of thousands of viewers who used to sit around and watch videos on YouTube, they're gone because of those types of like a lot of the hunting producers left YouTube because of all these cha challenges that they faced. And it really started for hunting channels. The de demonetization started I'm trying to remember the year it probably was around 2016 is when it really started to hurt hunting channels like they were at first they totally demonetized and shut down some hunting channels and, mm -hmm. and gun channels and stuff and so people started to gravitate away from the platform um there are still people who who just sit around and watch youtube i'll give you an example um my friend comes out to iowa to guide for a hunting outfitter every year and the, there's no TV reception at his at the place where his house and lodge are. So they just stream stuff on YouTube and other streaming platforms. So they do watch YouTube quite a bit on their TV at that house because they don't have any TV reception. You know what I mean? But sure. if they did have TV reception, maybe they'd be flicking through TV channels. I don't know. Um, so there are. But the point is, there are people who are watching YouTube. But at least for the hunting genre, I think we've lost a lot of recreational viewers for hunting on YouTube because of that. But there are people who are going on there to search how to fix a bow, how to call in the deer, how to do this, yep. how to do that related to hunting. So those are those are the videos that I see very successful for me now, as opposed to just your recreational hunting video. There are guys watching, yep. just not as many. Got it. But you're well, fishing. I, I am fishing. I will, I, I guess one, one more point before we wrap this up, I suppose, is I do think there's been a little bit of a change, like fishing channels at one point, a lot of how-to stuff. And then all of a sudden there was a few people that could make like legit entertaining, either fishing, like highly produced type stuff mm -hmm. or like the very vloggy style where they're more interested in like the character and the, shaky camera and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's only a few people that could do either of those things really well. And now there's a lot more people that can do those things really well. Like I've seen so many fishing videos that are like, like you could watch this on a theater movie screen mm -hmm. because it looks that good. Whether the content's that great or not, I don't know, but the story flows pretty well. The B roll's great. They got drones, they got yada, 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 yeah. right? So I don't think there's a competitive advantage to that as much anymore. Yeah. I suppose it's still really cool to be able to do. And I think if you're not doing some of it, like you're missing an opportunity, but it's not necessarily going to win the game for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, it's almost like, it seemed like in the last few years, what I would call like legit movie filmmaker types have really gotten into YouTube, Nice. whether it's fishing or whether it's, you know, there's other stuff that I've watched as well. So yeah, just so much has changed, I guess. Hmm. And YouTube, it'll be interesting to see where it yeah. changes in the future. Um, but nevertheless, I, I appreciate you coming on the show, yeah. chit-chatting. Sean McVeigh, 
Sean's Outdoor Adventures. Is there anything else you want to mention? Anything else you want to plug? Where should people um, go find you? If, you? if anyone's going to be trying to find my channel, I spell Sean S E A N. It's the Gaelic Irish spelling for Sean. So if you're looking for Sean's Outdoor Adventures, you got to type in S E A N apostrophe S Outdoor Adventures. Uh, other than that, yeah, you're you know, if anybody wants to check out my stuff, I'm out there. And I do, uh, I do want to get more into fishing actually, and make more fishing videos. Um, I just, it's a matter of not having time usually, <laughs> but sure. Hopefully this winter. And I have sitting behind me, I bought a Garmin Live Scope for ice fishing. So that's like a three thousand dollar piece of equipment. That's ridiculous because mm -hmm. I don't even. I mean, it's for me, ice fishing is going to be maybe two months or something, <laughs> but I can probably hook it up to the boat somehow but anyhow uh -huh. i'm looking forward to trying that so if you want to see me try to figure out how to use that you can come check out my channel and uh hey you know brett we've uh, gotten together over the last couple of years um if they, if the cards align maybe we'll end up getting together again who knows but um we'll just look for that as a possibility likewise dude and I, there's two great ways to learn things i think you can learn from an expert that claims to know everything or you can learn from another guy who's just an amateur Joe, just like you going at, at the same point that you are yeah. and following along. So I always say that like open water fishing, I'm probably more towards an expert category because I'm a professional guide. Ice fishing, I'm, I'm just like y'all. Yeah. Let's learn together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go fish, Sean. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Let's get some fish. I need Thanks some again for chatting. Yeah. We'll talk to you later, buddy. All right. Take care, man. Yeah, bye.